Welcome to the UC Improvement Academy. Today, we are going to learn about Key Driver Diagram, a profound way to organize our theory and align all improvement activities. We start building a Key Driver Diagram as we understand the problem and it evolves throughout the improvement journey. A Key Driver Diagram shows the connections between the goal and specific improvement activities. It's a visual display of team's theory on what drives or contributes to the project aim. It also serves as a communication tool to a wide range of stakeholders on what the team has tested, plans to work on, and has completed. A key driver diagram has multiple components. Why is this work important and why should I care? This is our global aim. Then we have the SMART aim. What is the specific and measurable goal of the project? How will we know that we are improving? And what is the focused area of the project? Next, we have the key drivers. What are the essential components or drivers that will help us achieve the SMART aim? What factors influence our SMART aim? And then we have the actionable interventions and ideas that we will be testing and implementing to address these drivers. This is how we get there. This way, a key driver diagram gives an organized picture of the whole. It's a dynamic tool and it evolves as we learn through improvement journey. We may identify new drivers that we did not think of before. We may modify our theory and approach. Or we may find some drivers or interventions are not really needed. If you find yourself doing an activity that is not connecting with the drivers, then ask yourself, huh? is there a driver that I have failed to identify that needs to be added? Or have I gone on a tangent and doing things that are not aligned or needed for this improvement work? Now let's learn its application with an example. You are part of a care team at Happy Healthy Clinic. The clinic has five physicians, four nurses, four medical assistants, a pharmacist, and two receptionists. It's a nice busy practice, but over the last couple of years, the average time that patients spend in the waiting area have been creeping up and causing unhappy patients. Everyone feels the inefficiencies at their end and staff members frequently stay late beyond duty hours. The medical director and nurse manager are leading the efforts to improve this system and here is their key driver diagram. Now let's look at its components. The global aim is to provide best experience to patients and staff. This is the motivation behind this work. Why is this work important? The smart aim of the current effort is focused at reducing the wait time. The team aims to reduce the average wait time from the current 25 minutes to 10 minutes in the next four months by July 1st. The key drivers are the vital elements that need to be in place to achieve your smart aim. As you develop a better understanding of the problem through go sees data, bright spots, existing best practices, and others, you will be able to better identify the key drivers. Think of these as what, as in what is needed for improvement, and write them in positively framed nouns. Like in this case, the drivers are standard efficient check-in process. As they notice staff using different ways to get through the check-in process is causing variations in the system. Creating standard of common processes is an essential part of improvement work. Optimal scheduling of appointments. This is to assign appropriate standard time slot for different types of clinic encounters. Team buy-in and engagement. So everyone owns and embraces the change effort. They express their ideas and share the burden of testing and improvement. An engaged team and local champions among staff go a long way in culture change and sustainability. Having a reliable pre-clinic huddle. This was added as driver as they noticed that when they conduct a brief 10-minute pre-clinic huddle between the nurse and the doctor to plan the day, the overall efficiency is better with less delays. But only few physicians do the huddle and the frequency is inconsistent. Some best practices or bright spots need to be part of the daily routine and be done reliably and consistently. And lastly, having timely and accurate data feedback on performance. The team leaders need to be data guided in their decisions and need quick feedback on how their testing and PDSA cycles are affecting the outcomes. So they need means to have close real-time data feedback. 
By identifying and listing down the key drivers, the team knows what needs to be in place. Now how they do this are the interventions. The interventions are the specific actions and the change ideas that will be tested, are being tested, or have been tested and implemented, and how each intervention connects with one or more key driver. By using different colors, we can tell that which interventions have completed the testing phase and are implemented, which are active, and which have not yet been tested. Intervention ideas can come from several places, including brainstorming sessions with team members, staff or patient feedback, literature review, SFMEA, best practices, and exploring change concepts. By using a key driver diagram, we develop a broad and comprehensive view of the problem and its solutions. It makes us think of different ways that improvement can be tested and saves us from the trap of giving up on improvement prematurely. It prevents us from fixating on one or two preconceived ideas of interventions. It enables us to separate which change effort is going well and which one needs more work. And it's a nice, succinct way to organize and communicate the improvement efforts, especially when dealing with complex systems, multidisciplinary teams, and stakeholders. As the project progresses, keep updating your key driver diagram. Now it's your turn. Leverage the power of key driver diagram to drive home some big wins.